We're joined now by Arizona State softball player Kelsey Hall for the very first edition of Kelsey's Corner, a weekly segment that we're going to be doing here on the PHNX Sun Devil Show, kind of recapping everything that's going on with ASU softball. Kelsey, the first few games of the new season, just how was it to get back out there with your teammates and, and really take on the weekend? First off, hey guys, how are you? I feel like it's been forever since we've got to chat. First and foremost, I want to say I got a lot of responses about our hot or not in our <laughs> edition <laughs> in our edition of last time I was on here and a lot of people agreed with me about Cheesecake Factory so I just <laughs> of course to, they did of course I had they to did. wait till we were recording mm. to let you know that thank you so appreciate just that. Had to throw that in there but um you know first weekend out of the way you know I think there's a lot of emotion nerves just a lot of unknown that goes into the first weekend of a very very new team mm -hmm. so we had obviously some people out that we didn't want to have out of course so i think that was pretty elephant in the room but you know at the end of the day i think we're learning and we're growing and we're really excited to get after it this weekend absolutely you guys split over the weekend uh, picked up a couple wins over St. Thomas and then Maine and then dropped two games against Northwestern and Boise State. We'll obviously cover all that. I do want to start with you, though, with, with Boise State, because I know that was a game that you had circled, something that we had talked about the last time you were on. Mm -hmm. Just what were the emotions, I guess, leading up to that and then your very first at bat? Yeah, that was, um, you know, I think it was a very interesting story for me once I saw the schedule like we talked about before, yeah. but... I think going into the weekend, I was a lot more trusting in like preparation than I think I probably thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to go in honestly like a nervous wreck and it just be like, oh. but you know, I, I think they also have a very uh, different team than it was when I was there. So it wasn't exactly like I'm the only one that was gone and mm -hmm. it was like, you know, so it was definitely, it was really good to see a lot of my old teammates and even the new ones they were super nice after the game it was literally like there was like a line like everyone was just hugging me and it was that was very nice because it could either go one way or the other mm -hmm. right it could be like we're not going to acknowledge you or but schultz is a very class act so i give all props to that and so definitely going into my first at bat though uh, it kicked in a little bit where i was like <laughs> kelsey if you don't hit the ball right now <laughs> you're going like i think my count was like one and two one two i think as like you better swing at this because i they're coming at you right now so luckily i got one hit on the day so that was that was a win for me there but they're a good ball club and i think we definitely didn't present ourselves in the way that we could have i think mm -hmm. that first inning was a better testament to who asu could be mm -hmm. and then we just kind of let the game slip away but you know what we'll learn yeah, I, I think, again, just kind of taking a look at everything that went over, went on over the weekend, it's clear when you guys get out to a good start, I feel like you guys can take care of business, especially when you're able to keep it consistently. And then it's just, it's obviously so early on in the season, but when it's that that tight, tight 2 nothing game, uh, you're going into the last inning, et cetera, like it really is, I feel like that's where you guys down the stretch are eventually going to learn to shine. Um, when it comes to just Club Farrington, I, I know again this is kind of your your first go round with, with ASU softball. Just what was what was the environment like? Was it everything you expected it to be? Honestly, I after the Northwestern game, I was talking to the girls because we just got I don't know if you saw we just got our new facility, we just got our new locker room, yeah. team yeah. room, which is just insane. But we were sitting in there, and I was asking them, I was like, does every game feel like this? Does every <laughs> game like? Northwestern obviously is a top 20 program and they're for a reason they're a very good ball club but I was like I feel like we got like beef with them <laughs> like and it had nothing to do with them but like mm -hmm. every it was just such an I haven't been in such like an intense game and I think like it was so I was so pumped in center field seeing Kylie just throw down her mask after a strikeout like it was pretty and it was pretty sick to be a part of. So if that's how we play every game with that type of energy, Club Farrington's going to live up to its name for sure. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I think some of the beef probably stems with stems with Nor Northwestern. I I don't know if it was a regional or super regional mm -hmm. at Club Farrington like 2 years ago. 
I, yeah. I think there was there was a game there too where it just didn't go in ASU's favor. Um, and Northwestern got the dub. So I think that's where that probably stems. Maybe a little bit of fan hatred there. Yeah, that yeah, that's kind of what I got informed of. But I was like, dang, like this is fun softball. Like oh, yeah. I was like, I can get used to this. So it's pretty cool to see like bits and pieces from the weekend of like what we are very capable of doing. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. It, it's it's like we said, it's so early on in the season. And I think the really fun part about the Kajikawa Classic, being that it is at Club Farrington and so early in, in the season, you guys get a, a really good idea of what this team can be, right? You start to see even in the first couple games, stars start to come out. And you mentioned Kylie McGee. Just what did you see from her this weekend? I know just th- there was one game specifically. I think she had like 11 Ks. She was just on a tear at a certain point in the season. Does she just get like locked in and then it's just game over for the opposing team yeah she's she's a grinder for sure i think she is the sweetest like soft human being like off the field and then like when you're just like facing her like i said in that northwestern game like like she was an animal like i wasn't gonna go like not like i wasn't gonna go near her in the dugout but she's just like <laughs> on that mound like she's gonna like go at you and i think once she gets to that point and she's there, like, if she can get there, like, every game, she's going to be phenomenal. It yeah. was fun to be a part of. And then, like, even after the Boise game, obviously, there was an elephant in the room. Like, that game meant a lot to me. And mm-hmm. we obviously mm-hmm. didn't pull it through. And she, like, she took that to heart for me. And I was like, that, that is a leader and that's a teammate right there. That I just gained so much respect for her from this weekend. And so I'm very excited that she's on my team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Between her, Mac Osborne, uh, it was, I feel like pitching wise, it was a really, really great weekend. Um, obviously it was a split, but 2-0 against a top 20 program in Northwestern, I think is, you'll, you'll take that. Obviously some, sometimes you'll get them, sometimes you won't. But in, in terms of the, the offense this weekend, was there anybody that surprised you in just how well they handled the pressure? Um, I wouldn't say anyone surprised me because I think the girls on this team, one of the things about us is we are a pretty calm, cool, collected group. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. sometimes probably we will need that little bit of more of like a little oomph about it because we are a little calm, a little sometimes, you know, a little too calm, cool, collected. (laughs) But um, no, there's never a doubt on anyone in this lineup and that's not even just the politically correct answer but yeah. really there was never for me there was never a bit of like oh gosh she's she loves it you know what i mean like yeah. everyone's gonna pull it through which was pretty cool to feel absolutely then i do want to talk about the offense obviously jordan van hook didn't play uh but alicia denby uh transfer just phenomenal weekend uh one of the games i believe she had what two homers like mm-hmm. What has she brought to this team, not just like when you guys are out there, but in the locker room, in practices, in meetings, outside of what everybody sees on game day? Yeah, well, Lily is actually my best friend. She's my roommate. She's probably can hear me in the other room right now. But um, she's, we started at Fresno together. I don't know if you knew that. So we've known each other for some years and we came into this together talking about how like we really wanted to leave a legacy on a very respectful program and that's exactly what she's doing you know she's shows up every day and she, there's never a doubt that she's going to give 100 percent to like mm-hmm. what she does and what she wants to be she's definitely a leader by example she's again always doing the right things so she's not necessarily like that vocal screaming loud leader but at the same time like her actions speak so much louder than most people's words mm-hmm. So I think she's been, it's, I'm very, very blessed to be able to be here for her last year. Absolutely. So. Another player that I, I was just curious, or I guess one of your teammates, just Yanixa Acuna, I felt like had another, she had herself a really, really solid Kajikawa Classic, and she's a, a younger player. Obviously last season being, being a freshman, like, do you remember being her age at, at that point in her collegiate career? And just what did, what did you see from her uh, in the Kajikawa Classic this past weekend? Yeah, sometimes I totally forget that she's only a sophomore. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Like, I think a big part is um, her sister Yanni is around. That obviously challenges her and betters her every single day. But I've definitely seen her grow 
not even just as an athlete, but just mm-hmm. as a teammate and a human being, just wanting to that want to be there. And I think that spark of like, I can do this and I can be that like contributor to a program, I think is like, she's seeing that she can do. And I think when you're young, you don't necessarily probably recognize your value as much just because Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, it's like the way that it goes of you being young, but she's, she's fun to be in the outfield with. We're always laughing. We're always like bettering each other and it's always a good time. So I'm really excited to keep playing out there with her for sure. Yeah, I think that's one thing, and not to say that the the softball program is more close, like as a unit than some of the other programs out there. But there's always been just something about the like camaraderie and the sisterhood that ASU softball has that is just it's just different. It's different, mm-hmm. right? Like spend a lot of time with the football team, the basketball team, the hockey team, et cetera. And there's just there's something different about ASU softball. Like, can you put it into words? Maybe it's just softball, like as the sport in general, but it really does feel like you guys are family from the moment you guys meet each other. Yeah. I think a big part of that is a lot of the sports you named are male sports. Yeah. I think that is a big part of it. And I think with our team too, though, like you are who you're led by your culture is established by your ringleader and obviously coach B again, I think I probably said this every single time we've talked, she really believes that she can build a good program off of even better people. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. she's more of a people person first than like, she takes someone that works hard, is obviously a good ball player, but an amazing human being over a straight, don't want to be around her. She's a maniac, terrible human being, but she can hit the crap out of the ball, you know? So like, that's what we're building our program around. And so I think that's a really big part. And obviously ASU last year had some trials and tribulation so i think a lot of the returners what they were looking for in this next chapter was to build that so they welcomed us and that's why as a result from day one it was like there are no returners there's no transfers we're all in this together this yeah. is all new year for all of us so it's been it's been really special for sure you you bring up coach b obviously this is her second year trying to revitalize the program get it back to where it was in building this program to to being a consistently top 25 team, right? A team that's constantly um, in the postseason, which is what ASU softball is known for. you got a couple players on the team that obviously know what that's like. You brought up the fact that you guys had that game against Northwestern, a top 20, 25 program, beat you guys 2-0, um, a really, really tight game. Like, how far do you guys think you are from being that good right being a consistent top 25 team i think for us the physical part is is there we're no loss no bad at bat that we had was due to physical ability which Mm -hmm. i think is a really easy fix you know what i mean so i think that i think us believing in ourselves and that capability of being like you know what we are going to go out there we are going to stop on whoever's on the field is I think that's the part that we're just bridging that gap slowly and slowly. I think now that we're playing and again, like I said, that Northwestern game was probably one of the first times that I was like, oh, this is a couple like these girls can get after it. It's <laughs> like everyone, like everyone is so nice on this team. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think getting that little fire burning and building under us and our coaches definitely are demanding that out of us. Even no ma- they tell us every day, no matter what we do on the field, there's always something we can be better at. Yeah. So I think we're working every single day to get there. I just think getting that fire under us a little more, as soon as that comes, I think we're going to be dangerous. Absolutely. For you, what what do you want to improve moving into the, the Little Wood Classic that you guys have coming this next week? You know, for me, I think... My my thought process when it comes to softball probably is a little unorthodox. I don't necessarily look at like sure like my results weren't probably as stellar as I wanted because like I just think like I'm looking back at my process of like you know what mm-hmm. how was I feeling presence wise how was I feeling emotionally and I think so going into the weekend my biggest goal is to make sure that like my presence is very known and established mm-hmm. in the box like I had a pretty decent streak last year and I don't remember what I was doing physically I just remember being in the box and feeling like I filled up the box with my Mm -hmm. presence if that makes sense yeah 
So I think just like making sure I'm holding myself to that standard of that mental like fire that I was just talking about and mm -hmm. making sure that it doesn't matter who's on the mound. It's like what I'm doing. That would be my consistently every at bat is what I'm looking for. Absolutely. Any message to the ASU fans getting ready to pack Club Farrington another time this coming week? Club Farrington won't disappoint, guys. I need y'all there. We need you guys loud. It's a lot more fun once you guys are there on our side. So make sure you show up and show out. Absolutely. ASU softball player Kelsey Hall. Again, best of luck this coming week in the Littlewood Classic. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys.